Hey, this is Jay Sandler. Today we're going to talk about owner financing. I'm super excited to be able to teach you guys, inspire you guys, and motivate you guys to invest in real estate. And most of all, if you're a renter and you want to become a homeowner, I'm here to help you. Uh, if you're here to just learn real estate also, uh, or about your business, or anything I can teach you, anything that I know that I've spent thousands of dollars and years learning, um, I want to share it with you. I want to make you better. Um, and that's what it's all about here. So let's talk about owner financing, the meaning of it, the definition. And when we talk about buying a home on a rent to own or a land contract or owner financing, there's a number of different names for owner financing. It's also known as creative financing or seller financing. You've heard it called land contract, contract for deed. Um, these are some of the names for it. So, and they all kind of mean the same thing. It's kind of the same strategy, but sometimes different contracts, but depending on the name and what state you're in, but you always want to find out what state, uh, what your state laws are and what's legal in your area. Now I'm giving you a, a broad, I know in my area in New York, um, I do a lot of rent to owns, uh, you know, teach people a lot about them. And I, I've used a lot myself, I've used it. So, I'm getting better and better at it. I'm a lifetime learner, so I'm here to uh, share what I've learned with you guys so you guys can get better. And don't be afraid to ask me any questions uh, in, in this forum here or on Facebook or on my website, anywhere uh, I'm willing to share my uh, expertise and what I paid thousands of dollars to learn uh, in the last five, six years and in a lifetime. So back to the definition of owner financing. It's when a property buyer finances the purchase directly through the person or entity selling it, which means if I'm selling you a property, you're going to purchase it through me. I'm going to finance the deal. It's not going to be a bank. It's not going to be a any kind of loan. You're not going to have to go to, uh, you know, a mortgage broker. I mean, unless... For the down payment, you may do that for the down payment, but most, uh, I'm not going to finance the down payment, but I'm going to finance the, the balance of the, the total price of the property that you're buying from me. If we're talking about me selling it, I'm just trying to make this clear and as easy as possible for you. So the property buyer, which is you, finances the purchase directly through me if I'm selling it to you. Or if an entity is selling it, if somebody has an LLC, or a corporation or a business and they're selling a property uh, to you then they're going to be financing it owner financing it to you so we're not talking about a traditional loan from the bank or mortgage loan from a mortgage broker any of this uh, it's through the owner this often occurs when a prospective buyer which would be you cannot obtain funding through a conventional mortgage lender you can't get a loan because you have bad credit or shady credit or I shouldn't say shady but you know your credit your credit's not so great and that's not a bad thing it's it's, it's uh, you know you could have went through a couple of hardships and you're digging your way out you might have went through a bankruptcy or a divorce um, those things happen and you get in a position like that that uh, you, you're trying to build I mean if you're here listening to me you're trying to build your way out of that or uh, or you're just trying to learn a different strategy here but we're talking about owner financing so uh, you as the buyer also might be just unwilling to pay the prevailing market interest rates maybe we're in a time right now we're not but uh, uh, in this particular specific time that we're doing this um, light cast here for you uh, the interest rates are low but uh, maybe in a year or two or three that when you some other people are listening to this down the road the interest rates might be higher and you don't want to pay them higher interest rates so you want to negotiate with the owner uh, for a better interest rate and you know the seller may agree to owner financing if he or she is having difficulty selling the property which means if I'm selling a property I'll agree to owner financing if I can't sell it in any other way maybe I've tried to sell it with a realtor it's been on the market for six eight months and now the contract's up and I just can't sell it for one reason or the other uh, you know it could be because it wasn't you know it may be in the MLS but it may not be marketed right it may not be marketed hard enough or maybe it might not be that at all it might be just that uh, you know your property isn't worth what you're asking for so the buyer uh, has to find you you as the buyer have to find me if I'm very motivated and ask me if I'll do an owner finance deal 
Or I may uh, market my property and say, hey, this is a rent to own now. I couldn't sell it through a realtor. I couldn't sell it on my own uh, the conventional way. So now I'm going to try something new, different, creative. I'm going to try to sell it in a owner finance deal. So I might be, the reason I'm going to do that is because I had difficulty selling the property before. So owner financing uh, may only cover part of the purchase price with a smaller bank loan making up the difference, which means that you as a buyer may get uh, uh, half the total price from the bank and, and I'm going to owner finance the other half to you. But more often than not, that's not the case because uh, you as a buyer normally say can't get uh, a good size loan from the bank. So you're looking for a motivated seller that will owner finance to you. So this is also known as creative financing uh, or seller financing because this is now we're getting creative. Uh, we can negotiate creatively. Maybe, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you one way that I've been really creative in buying and selling is uh, say it, um, you're asking for uh, $5,000 down on a property and so much a month, $500 a month, say, and I'm buying the property for $50,000. Well, just... In the past, say I didn't have the five thousand dollars or ten or whatever they were asking, and I say, well, you know, for five, if the down payment is five thousand dollars, I'll say I got twenty five hundred dollars cash, and I got a car worth twenty five hundred. Would you be willing to take that? Sometimes they say yes. Sometimes they say no. I've had it go both ways, and even as uh, that's how you get creative. Even as me selling a property, if somebody doesn't have the five thousand down, I'm going to say, hey, what do you have the trade? Because depending on what I have invested in the property, um, I might, you know, I'll know that. So I'll know if I can get creative or not and, and say, uh, you know, if you got $2,500, you say you got. And I'll say, well, can you go to a friend or can you go to a family member? Or maybe you can go to the bank or a credit union and get that other $2,500. Or tell you what, do you have a truck worth $2,500? I know uh, one of my buddies needs a truck or I need a truck or my son or brother or sister, you know, uh, get creative. So it's also called creative financing and you can do so many creative things and it's also called seller financing. So the seller's financing the deal for you. So Investopedia, which, which we're using right here in, in front of you, uh, explains owner financing. Uh, it's common in a buyer's market, which means the buyer has the advantage here. Um, the sellers, you know, they're not, they can't sell their property for one reason or another. They become very motivated to sell her. So it's a buyer's market. The advantage is to the buyer, to you. Um, you know, you can buy a property and negotiate a really good deal. Sometimes buying property is way, way below fair market value. And that's what I've learned to do through the years from my mentor and uh, mentors and other top students that I've learned from. And uh, so in order to protect his or, or her own interests, the seller may require a higher down payment than a mortgage lender would. Well, you don't see that very often. Well, actually, in my case, in my local area, I don't see it that often. But if you get on Craigslist.org or other, uh, you know, other uh, real estate sites, or you get into other markets other than mine, and sometimes you do see that a seller is asking for a higher down payment. So. And the reason being because they want you to have some skin in the game. They want you to have you pay a higher down payment. You're not going to be apt to default on, on the property. In my case, in my local area, I, I've learned it uh, inside and out. And I know what normally people have to spend in my local area on a down payment. Uh, through the years, I've learned what most people have and what they don't have in, in my target market. And uh, I normally ask for 10% 10, 10 or less down. And like I say, too, I also get creative. And it's, I always make it, try to make it the benefit of, uh, I always do, not try, but I always keep in mind and focus my goal of making it the benefit of the buyer. Because uh, now I, I, you know, I've done enough deals that, that uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with with my income so I can give better deals and focus more on my buyers uh, without going broke so down payments of 20 percent or more are not com uncommon uh, what they say but it depends on what area you're in if you're asking for 20 percent down um, because you know what the, the reason why they do that is be because they don't want you to default they want you to have skin in the game but also because um, you know they know 
some of them that, that don't concentrate on the buyers and give them all they got uh, know that you can't get uh, a bank loan so a bank requires 20 percent down so some people think they're going to sell their property and get more down than that and in some cases maybe they do but uh, those are the people that hang on to their property longer and then they become more motivated and then those are sometimes the deals you can get uh, for 10 10 percent down or less also if you keep uh, going back to them and seeing if they become more motivated but the deed to the property is usually not transferred to the buyer until all payments have been made okay so you don't get the title you don't get the, the deed until it's all paid in full and that's kind of a no-brainer because uh, you know you just like a bank uh, you don't get you have a lien on your property until it's paid in full and then you get clear title so it's it's not too much different from a bank but let's skip down here a little bit um, and say and that's because the reason you don't get it also that, that uh, Investopedia says is because no institu and no institutional lenders are involved the overall terms of financing are much more negotiable and can be set up to provide benefits to both the seller and the buyer um, you know absolutely it can be set up to provide benefits to both the seller and the buyer because uh, the seller may not be able to buy a property any other way and the buyer may not be able to sell it any other way so it's a kind of a one hand washes the other which is great and the terms the overall terms and when you when I say terms I mean the down payment the monthly payment the interest rate the total length of the loan and even the total price it's you can negotiate with sellers it's pretty hard to negotiate with the bank isn't it uh, the bank has a policy and they usually have a set uh, interest rate of course it depends on your credit rating but normally not a lot of things are negotiable with the bank but owner finance deal everything is negotiable remember that if you remember nothing else with this everything is negotiable and an owner finance deal is uh, when somebody is very motivated to sell and if you're a buyer you're looking only for motivated sellers so uh, the buyer also saves on points and closing costs normally with an owner finance deal there's not too many closing costs uh, it's pretty simple to do you go to the attorney they usually take care of everything for you if you've never done a owner finance deal uh, get my book stop running and become a homeowner now go to jayststhilaire.com or go to jaysrenttoown.com or get on uh, Facebook and Facebook friend me friend request me and you'll get all uh, my free training and uh, I got a new product coming out uh, about how to stop running and be a homeowner uh, be some video training that's coming up soon and you'll get a bunch a bunch of free bonuses with that um, even even thinking about including throwing my book in in with that or you can uh, get my book on sale here uh, within a week or two it'll be up on my website for sale and on Facebook so I really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short training and it's going to be 13 14 minutes long and the talk about owner finance if you got any questions um, hit me up on Facebook or my website like I said jststhilaire.com www.jststhilaire.com uh, go through my old website and look at uh, you know what's in there look under about me hit home hit the home home page hit the blog read some of the blog uh, uh, I'm gonna be having some free videos coming out soon I'm just you know I just I'm working at this night and day I get a, I stay up late every night um, to, to bring you guys some training to, to get I've been working behind the scenes you guys haven't seen nothing yet I've been working the last six eight months non-stop late at night early in the morning I get up at four o'clock in the morning to, to I wrote my book for the last uh, six eight months and uh, I got tons of stuff going on behind the scenes so behind the scenes so I want you guys to stick with me and uh, I'm gonna teach you as much as I can and give you as much free information as I can and uh, if you like any of that I'll have some products coming out later on that uh, you might want to buy and or you might not you want to just uh, to keep hanging with me and get the free stuff if you want but uh, I believe that you you're gonna learn a lot uh, from me uh, from now on because I'm getting better at uh, teaching inspiring and motivating you and others uh, to learn about real estate real estate investing and becoming a better uh, person in business uh, to grow your business to get better or to grow your person out your your uh, personal development to get better hopefully that uh, I don't come across as I know everything 
or I'm uh, higher than anybody, but I just want to share my message and uh, I want you guys to succeed as much as I do. So um, enough rambling on here. So uh, I read the last line here. I'm not sure if I got all this. The buyer saves on points and closing costs while the seller can obtain monthly cash flow that provides a better return and fixed income. So that's the very last thing that they'll say is uh, the buyer, you, you save on points and closing costs. I might have already mentioned that. But uh, while the seller can obtain monthly cash flow. So if you're not, you might be a buyer, but also down the road, if you're going to be an investor or if you're going to sell your home that you bought or you want to uh, use the same um, strategies as, as buying, you can use the same thing as selling. You can be the seller and you can create monthly cash flows that provide a better return than a fixed income investment. So get my book, read my book, and that teaches you how to uh, buy a house on a, a rent-to-own strategy. And even though you have own your, own your own house, make sure you get it and read it anyway because the same exact steps that you use to buy your home, you can be an investor. You can buy another home, a second home, uh, for an investment property. It's the same exact steps to, to buy a home and be a home owner, primary residence, or be an investor. So... I uh, hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys learned something. Come back and see me often. Thanks.